Okay, people, weird little drumbeat appreciation number two. Why? Because the weird beats must be appreciated. Uh, today's beat is Are You In Love by James Blake, one of my favorite artists. Um, obviously, an electronic beat. I didn't really want to do electronic beats for this like series. I wanted to keep it to live drummers because obviously we're like a dying breed. Um, uh, but you have to study your enemy in order to beat your enemy. Your enemy. No, but um, uh, some beats are just too cool to ignore, even if they're electronic. And James Blake often is uh, making beats like that, I think. Um, anyway, so also this beat, it's not just electronic because like they were lazy and didn't want to pay for a real drummer. It's electronic because it only works if it is electronic, I think. So I forgive him. Okay, so the beat basically is this. Uh, yeah, what's so cool about that? What's cool is that there's no bass drum. Did you notice that? There's no bass drum. I took time to transcribe the bass drum part. There it is. I spent hours thinking of that joke. Um, there's no bass drum. How can that be? Why is there no bass drum? Um, there's no bass drum because, well, I don't know, but I, my theory is this. My theory is, um, you know, the song is a question and I think James Blake feels that the bass drum is like a period, it's kind of the opposite of a question mark. And um, if he puts it in, it turns from like this kind of floaty, mysterious ballad vibe to just like a mellow, like R&B thing that's like slightly weird, but mostly straightforward. And it doesn't work. I, j I think the song doesn't work if there's bass drum. I think it's one of those like little things that turns it from not a song into a song. Um, which is why I wanted to take time to appreciate it because it's not just weird for the sake of being weird. I think it's weird in a very necessary way. Um, on a related note, I think the thing about the drums being like a period, the drums being certainty, um, I, I feel like I, maybe I started thinking about that after I saw the movie Gravity which was, I think, directed by Alfonso Cuaron, I think. Um, anyway, in that movie, the whole score is like really synthy and weird and floaty until Sandra Bullock makes it to Earth, spoiler. She makes it to Earth and suddenly there's drums and like voice, but especially the drums kick in. Um, in other words, the drums mean Earth, they mean like solidity and um, he didn't want to have that feeling in the movie until she gets to Earth, basically. That's what I think. Um, anyway, so I feel like James Blake kind of did a similar thing, but the crazy thing is it never kicks in. I kept expecting the bass drum to kick in, like especially at the end when of the song when um, you know there's it's really swelling up and there's clarinets and strings and everything. Uh, I really expected it to land there and it just doesn't, it keeps floating. And by the way, about the clarinets and strings, I love imagining, um, you know, in a James Blake like tribute orchestra concert where some like hip orchestra in the village or something does, you know, does a James Blake concert. And then there's some guy in like a tux with like, you know, like gel, you know, like old fashioned hair. And he's like looking up at the conductor with his like 808 and he's like, that kind of thing. I I hope that happens because it would be funny for me. Um, anyway, it never hits. Another kind of uh, relevant song is the last song off the album, Trip by Janae Aiko, which is one of my favorite albums of all time. The song is called Trip also. Um, and uh, um, the, it never really lands until the very end of the song, the last like four bars um, the bass drum comes in. I think the whole rest of the song is just like, just like one, two, 
three. I'm pretty sure that's all there is the rest of the song. And then at the end, it's like something like, something like that. Anyway, so it kind of lands and you're, you're feeling like, okay, we've done our weird floatiness. Now it's the end of the album. We're like driving off into the sunset. We've made it out alive, as she says. Um, but no, never happens on this song because it's a question. We never find out if this person is in love. The whole point is we don't know, I think. Um, okay, now, why is it... Uh, why does it have to be electronic? Because if you listen really closely to the hi-hats, um, you can hear that they're actually, they're actually shaped like, well, I'm not actually sure if this is mirrored or not, but anyway, there's a kind of like lead up to the note. It's not just like, tss, it's like tss, 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 that kind of thing. Obviously you can't do that on the drum set. You can, you can kind of do it like this. Like, which sounds cool, but it doesn't really work to do it like all the way through a song. It's just for like one-offs, like that kind of thing. But you couldn't really do that all the way through a song. Obviously every other piece of the drum set is, starts with a sharp attack and then fades off. So that kind of attack where it builds up, to me that's the reason for electronic drums. That's kind of one of the only like excuses in my opinion of using Electronic drums is that you can do that that attack, which is sick and gives it a really cool like momentum energy pushing forward, I think. Um, so is that a crucial decision? If it was just a normal hi-hat attack on that beat like this, um, would it still work as a song? I think it would. I don't think that's as important as there not being any bass drum. But I don't think it would work as well. I think it would make it feel a little like lazy. It would it would kind of show that it was like such a simple beat. Whereas having this really subtle like change of attack makes it feel a little more um, uh, like bespoke. If we're going to use the artisanal data language, it makes it feel more more tailored for the actual song rather than he just got lazy and was like fuck it. I'll put you know some some hi-hats on it um it also makes it feel a little less like groovy you don't really want to like settle into it and dance it kind of to me it keeps me a little bit like off um like i, I i'm a little like put off by it in a good way so it makes me focus more on like what he's saying and and the arrangement and not feeling like, oh, this is like a dance kind of vibe. Which I think he wants for this song. He wants it, he wants you to really be like sitting and listening and not dancing. Um, you know, I, I obviously I love when songs are, you know, really rhythmic and they do make you dance, but I a pet peeve of mine is when people just automatically always try to make you dance. Cause some songs you shouldn't. Some songs are are sitting songs. And if you try to make them too like rhythmic and too, just feel like too you know good rhythmically, then they kind of lose the point. I feel like. So I think that's why the hi hats are a little weird, and also that's why there's no bass drum because if there was bass drum, it would really just be like, okay, well this is kind of a dance vibe, a, a mellow dance vibe, a hazy dance vibe. Um. Uh, so that's basically all I wanted to say, I think. There's no bass drum, which is so cool. Um, and it blew my mind when I first heard this because I, I think I first heard this song when I was really starting to struggle with uh, the dystonia that I have in my, in my bass drum foot, which is where your nerves basically quit on you after years of overuse and your muscles like don't work the way they're supposed to. It happens to musicians a decent amount, but it's really like not talked about much because um, it's weird and fairly rare. Um, but I got it and it's okay now, thank you for asking. It's better now because I got uh, Botox injected into my calf. I'm gonna have a beautiful wrinkle-free calf. Um, but anyway, it was 
kind of starting to get really bad at the time that I heard this song and I was really stressing about like, oh my God, what if I can't ever play bass drum again and therefore can't play drums? And then I heard this song and I was like, holy shit, you don't have to play bass drum. You don't have to, you know, do any of that. Um, there's a lot of creativity that can happen outside the realm of what we might be expecting, what we might be used to imagining. Which is also the point of this like series is like to focus on the anomaly. This song is definitely an anomaly. It's so subtle that you wouldn't really notice it. I think I feel like a lot of people don't notice that there is no bass drum, but they feel it. They feel it for sure. Because if there was bass drum, it just would be a different song, and I think it would be a bad song. I think that's all I have to say. I, you know, I could keep talking about it forever, but there's no bass drum. Um. So James Blake, smart guy. Uh, don't know what we'll do next week, but it's, or three weeks from now, but it will be weird and we will appreciate it. Bye.